Dạ vâng. Xin kính chào. Hello, hello everyone. I hope uh, you can uh, like hear me and you can see my video. I'll try to share my screen and then we can start. Okay. So let me know if you're not seeing anything. Uh, it would be good for me uh, to then just stop and then just uh, like reshare my screen. So I guess uh, you people can see my uh, presentation screen, right? Is it correct? You people can see my presentation screen. Hello, or not? Uh, Rohit, can you hear me? Can you hear us? Yes, yes. Uh, yes, I can hear you. Uh, welcome to our workshop today. And uh, uh, we can see your presentation right now. So uh, uh, yeah, please, uh, let's start our presentations. OK, perfect. OK, so hello, everyone. Uh, I hope you all are doing good and you are finding this event interesting. So to start with, I'll just give my short introduction. My name is Rohit and I'm an application engineer here at Carl Zeiss. And I look after Southeast Asia, Africa and Middle East market uh, for optical metrology products from application point of view, both software and hardware. So today uh, I would like to talk about production metrology and what solution we as a Zeiss can provide you, uh, which will be basically satisfy your need or you're facing some problem in the current production, then maybe you can find something interesting from my presentation and you can implement it into your production. So let's start. Okay. So content uh, would be that first, uh, what will be the motivation for measuring in direct in production environment? And if you are trying to go and measure in production environment, Definitely, there will be some influence on the accuracy of the system. Also, there will be a lot of influence of your production environment. Like there will be a vibration, there will be a temperature variation a lot. So that we will see like how we can basically compensate or we can reduce it while measuring in the production environment. And then uh, I'll show you a few uh, examples of concept of production metrology how we can implement size product directly into the production hall or in the production line. So first start with the motivation. So motivation is very clear uh, that if you uh, position the measurement machine directly into the production line, then there will be a short distance. You won't need the sophisticated logistic to move your manufactured part from the production line to the measurement room. And obviously there will be a possibility that you can uh, make the loading and unloading of the parts onto the scan box, size scan box, automated, so that you can implement the same system into the production line. And from the result point of view, uh, the feedback loop will be very small so that you will get uh, quickly like how your production is going on where there is more deformation and how to basically solve that uh, like a problems in your production part, which means you will create less scrap part in future. Because whenever you try to move the part to the, let's say metrology lab, dedicated lab, it takes time, it takes logistic, and obviously the feedback loop is bigger in that case because that information should come to the quality people then it will come to the production line and then the machine will stop and you will troubleshoot the problem. So we are trying to implement the system into the production line so that we can save all this time and money. Then obviously the third point is very important that part will be measured in the production environments, which means whatever influences which we have uh, based on the environment that there will be a room temperature, which will be changing as I can imagine like in uh, Southeast Asia temperature can change like up to 10 to 15 degrees during a day or in a, let's say, production shift. So that will definitely affect your measurement accuracy. Apart from environment, uh, you have the part, you need to know 
how to clamp the part, in which sequence you need to clamp the part, if the part temperature is varying a lot, then uh, that will obviously affect your measurement accuracy. Third is measuring device. Obviously, you need to decide which measuring this uh, device will give you more accurate result in the production environment. Then it comes like operator and measurement study. So all these things basically affect your measurement accuracy. And what we are trying to do here is we are making a strategy like how we can handle this influencing factor. So one would be that we can avoid totally this factor like temperature, humidity, uh, like production environment that we can do. Second is we can reduce it definitely. Third, we can compensate it. Like uh, I'll show you uh, in my future presentation, you'll see like how we can avoid, how we can reduce, how we can compensate. But at the end, there will be some influence which obviously we can't uh, like either avoid it, reduce it or compensate it. In that case, we need to consider that kind of influence on our final result. But we need to see a greater picture because what we'll be doing here is we are getting the feedback very quickly if we measure in the production environment. Okay, so we'll first talk about how to avoid it. Uh, so one, the first method you obviously know, measurement labs, dedicated measurement lab with the temperature control room, away from the production line, no uh, vibration, nothing coming from the production like a uh, environment. So this is basically the offline mode. And here our strategy is to avoid temperature, humidity, air pressure, vibration. And here uh, the good thing is uh, this measurement room can handle different parts. This is very flexible. And here we don't need to stick to the cycle time of your production. So here we usually do the series measurement. And but the downside of this is it requires very high effort and cost from logistic and operation to move the part from the measurement uh, room to the production line and vice versa. And sometimes if we talk about the BIW, body in white, sometimes we just scan uh, one BIW per shift. So you can see that obviously it gives you a very accurate result, but this is very slow. And yeah, if you are measuring in air conditioned room in measuring lab, then obviously you will get absolute accurate and traceable result and obviously you will get highest reproducibility. But you need to think that you literally need that kind of accuracy and repeatability or not. Because what we are trying to do over here is to give you the result very quickly. So uh, yeah, so next is like if we try to measure the part directly into the production environment. So obviously there will be a biggest influence of the temperature. First, it will basically decalibrate your measurement system. Second, it will basically deform your fixture and let's say the BIW. We'll take the example of BIW. Uh, so uh, it will basically deform or scale your BIW and the fixture. Second important thing, while measuring in the production environment is that vibration. So if there is a, some stamping line nearby the like equipment, measuring equipment or if the robots are moving, welding robots, then it can create vibration. And that vibration can generate a measurement error. So how we can compensate that is first is obviously uh, temperature. If temperature increases, then obviously your sensor will decalibrate it. You can compensate it by using the recalibration of the system, size system. But that is basically time consuming. It takes around two to three minutes to recalibrate the sensor again. So what we came up with is this scale bar. This is a carbon fiber scale bar. And the sensor here takes only one shot to recalibrate the sensor. So here you can see, he will just take one shot and the sensor will be recalibrated for that particular temperature automatically because the thermometer is already available as a web thermometer in our scan boxes. So here uh, there is one uh, very good graph. You can see uh, the green one is that when you don't compensate it, the sensor with respect to the temperature, then obviously 
you can see a lot of uh, like a deformation or like a deviation in your measurement. And if you compensate it with the temperature, you see a very stable uh, deviation throughout your production. So here, obviously, we are not using any temperature control room. We'll just take one shot of a carbon uh, fiber uh, hyperscale bar and we'll recalibrate the sensor with just one shot. So here, just uh, like uh, we did a test on a BIW uh, throughout a shift. In one shift, uh, the temperature was changing around 3 degrees Celsius. So <laughs> you can imagine, this is Germany. Here, temperature doesn't change like in Southeast Asia. But yeah, we did a test in Germany in production hall. We measured the BIW throughout the 16 hours of the shift. And the temperature in that 16 hour, it changes around 3 degrees. So from it 21, it went to 18, and then again around 22, like that. So what effects of the temperature it will, you can see in BIW is like it behaves same. So there are, we did a trained project, we measured same body multiple times in 16 hours. And you can see based on the temperature changes, your body also basically deform uh, with respect to, let's say we measured it in X and Y direction. And you can see all the graphs for the train project for SPC, you can see that it is following your temperature change. So yeah, based on the temperature change, uh, like we found out that the body, car body, BIW can go uh, up to 0.21 mm in length for four meter length, four meter car body, yeah. And also you can, there is a good thing about the size inspect software that you can compensate this temperature change mathematically in the size inspect software. So there is a possibility that we can compensate by scaling the mesh data. So this is the same graph just explaining that when we compensate uh, the uh, deformation of the BIW with the temperature, then we basically uh, change the range from 0.21 mm to 0.09 mm. So we are basically compensating it for the temperature. And here uh, in this image, you can see that if we don't compensate for the BIW, with respect to a temperature, you'll find results something like this. And if you compensate it with temperature, you will find result like this, which is more accurate. So here, whatever we are doing is, is all mathematical formula, which we are using in our software to compensate it for the body, for the particular temperature, so that you get the very accurate result. Because obviously if you measure the car body in 30 or 40 degrees Celsius, we won't be able to uh, like uh, correlate it with the CAT data to check whether there are really a deformation or it just because of temperature, the deformation is coming up. So with this uh, temperature compensation, uh, we can compensate uh, all parts uh, typically in our size inspect software. Then second is influence of vibration. So whenever you try to measure the part in the production environment, we'll see some vibration on your parts, basically. So we came up with the movement compensation. So this is also a mathematical algorithm, which will basically reduce the movement or the vibration coming from the uh, production line. So here, again, we did a test on a production line. So when we don't use movement compensation, the part scanning, look something like this. Uh, red means uh, basically it has a deviation and green means it has a perfect uh, like a scan data. So here on the right side, you can see that we compensated using the mathematical formula and you can see that without uh, movement compensation, the mesh range is around uh, 16 micron and with movement compensation, it is around six micron. So obviously we can't uh, basically uh, reduce this thing we can't reduce the vibration and the temperature but we can compensate that so if you remember from this uh like graph okay <laughs> too much yeah so we are here doing the compensation we can't reduce like temperature and all because we need to measure it into uh, our like a production hall 
then we need to basically compensate it using the mathematical formula okay and the idea behind uh, using the mathematical formula is that you don't need typically a sophisticated uh, like a vibration isolation pad while you are building up this machine into the production hall so obviously you are reducing some cost you don't need sophisticated vibration pad uh, below your machine to neglect the vibration coming from the production line yeah third thing uh, is that for biw again uh, let's say you are using this type of pillar to put the part even in cmm case you put the biw onto this column uh, so that all the degrees of freedom are getting restricted so here obviously let's say if you are building a new plant in a green field okay so that it will basically the floor will be setting up throughout the year so there will be changes in floor so how you can compensate that is that you can measure this uh, column uh, again and again after a few like a uh, few time or few days you need to measure it so here we are doing the compensation second whenever you put your car body which is obviously very heavy onto this columns obviously this column will also deform in a span of a time not uh, like let's say in one or two days but obviously in months it will have some effects on its uh, basically deformation so here just uh, we did some tests we put the car body multiple times at the same location at same column and here you can see uh, that we take a photogrammetry and you can see these columns are basically moving a bit it's not that much it's around uh, like averages in x direction is around 50 micron but yeah it is moving and it will have effect on your final result so what we can do here is we can't compensate it but we can reduce it like reducing it using a better fitting pins we can do that but also like if the fitting pins are very tight press fit then there will be a more vibration so second yeah obviously like if there is a very good fitting pin you are using then if you put multiple times the car body there it will wear out the material and the material will basically contaminate onto your this surface and your part will not be placed on the z direction at zero zero so how you can reduce it it's you need to do it manually you need to uh, clean that uh, surface regularly so this and avoid is that you can use uh, like this type of uh, like a pins which basically what it does it doesn't uh, like uh, restrict the part in one direction only but he what he does is doing it now in x and y location and once this is done this u pin will come on this side and he will pull the part to the downside which may be let's say the z direction so this type of pin uh, we can basically if we use this kind of pin we just can reduce this regular cleaning stuff okay so here uh, this is a, a like a summary of what we can compensate what we can reduce and the result between non-optimized and optimized version so temperature obviously we can compensate it in the size inspect software so if we don't do it, uh, the error would be around uh, 0.2 mm. And if you optimize, the error would be around 0.09 mm. Same if we change the pins. If you use better fitting pins, we can reduce it from uh, 200 micron to 100 micron. Picture geometry, if we measure the picture again and again uh, with let's say one or two days interval, then we can reduce that error also like this. And from that, the total difference of non optimizing and optimize in the production environment it would be around you can say around 200 micron per car body so this is just an example which we did it in our production hall with our car body it can change obviously but just to give you an idea that yes with optimizing doing the compensation we can implement this kind of metrology machine into the production environment directly okay so next uh, part of my presentation is the to show you the concept of production metrology how you can implement our machines into the production environment uh, 
So there will be three options, definitely. One is at line. So you're placing your production uh, metrology machine near to the production line and you're measuring like a, let's say one BIW or five BIW in a shift. Second is bypass that you have created a basically let's say aut automatic also or semi-automatic loading and loading of the car body which come from the production line, measure it and then again uh, move to the production line. And third one is the inline metrology, which means it will measure each and every car manufactured from your production line. So I'll show you the example also. So first one is the at line. So here, uh, production environment, obviously, uh, there will be influence of temperature, vibration, but it will be close to the production line. Here in at line, stage you need to manually load the part onto the measuring machine and then again load to the uh, production line so but here the case would be there will be a less effort from the logistic team because logistic doesn't need to move this car body to dedicated uh, cmm rooms or temperature control room here obviously you will be having more flexibility but we are not here uh, trying to achieve the cycle time. So no fixed cycle time, but you can do the series measurement. An example would be you can measure five car bodies in a shift, per shift you can measure. So as an example, we implemented a three eight series in four South Africa, and they are uh, implemented this machine near to the production line, and they are currently measuring stamp part, frame parts, and body parts. For the BIWs. Okay, this video, uh, I think so. AI team will show you later on. Uh, this is a very good video where customer explains how they are using the machine currently. Second uh, concept is the bypass. Here we are using fully automatic part loading from the production line so that no efforts from the logistic part will come directly uh, to the machine, measurement machine. And then uh, like depending on like if you want to just bypass this thing, you can like let's say if you want to measure the entire card, which obviously takes around 20 to half an hour uh, to measure one card, depending on the measurement plan you have. So and you know that your production cycle time is let's say five minutes. So obviously you need to bypass let's say uh, five to six car and you're measuring one car. But what will happen is that you will get a result very quickly and you can give the feedback to the production team how your production is uh, behaving. So if there is some error, if there is some large deviation, you can troubleshoot that quickly. Here uh, we can obviously measure a few samples, uh, which would be example as a 20 car bodies per shift. Uh, because this is come from the automatic loading and unloading. Uh, so this will be quite fast. And the example is that we uh, implemented this system uh, in SAIC, which is a Volkswagen China. And they are currently measuring underbody and frame body with their two uh, eight series scan box. So what happens? The car body comes from the rear from this direction and it goes from the uh, front side. So it's continuous going and then again, this body is uh, put into the production line for the future process on this. So I'm just giving one one example from the customer. We have implemented it uh, many places, uh, this bypass, at line, everything. And now the third thing is the inline. Here, what we are trying to achieve is that to measure each and every car which you are producing from the production line into the production line only. So here we'll be having the challenge for the fixed cycle times, which would be, let's say you're manufacturing a car, like in every three to five minutes, then we need to measure the car body also into five to three minutes. Yeah, like something like that. So here, what we are focusing on is just the area which is very critical for the quality. And we measure that area or let's say, if your inspection plan is small and you can measure the entire car body in three to five minutes, depending on your cycle time, then you can measure that also. Or otherwise you can basically measure the critical areas into the production line. And then obviously if you see problem, uh, 
like uh, production people or line manager will stop the machine and here we are achieving around 300 cars per shift we are measuring 300 cars per shift so here uh, this is our pilot project uh, this is not a uh, i would say the standard uh, scan box uh, this is our pilot project and we need to basically work together with the customer to develop this machine because all our scan boxes like until 8 series we use only two robots and two sensor to reduce the measurement time but in this uh, inline system which we call zeiss ais cell scan we use four robot and four sensor so that we are decreasing the uh, scanning time basically so here this is a concept uh, we are using like a four robot four sensor two robots are uh, basically dedicated for let's say uh, front part of the BIW and two robot and two sensor dedicated for the rear part. So we get basically more data in less time. And here, what customer is currently doing is they scan the area, they do the digital assembly, and then they check if their uh, car body matches for gap and sludge and all other stuff for deviation. And then they uh, give feedback to the production line quickly because like there is a big screen uh, available in the production line and this result are depicted on that uh, screen and then uh, people from the production line can see and if they see there is a big difference or big deformation they stop the line and then they check it so this uh, system we installed in Volkswagen China and Volkswagen uh, Germany so uh, this presentation the later presentation was given by uh, Kai, who is the head of uh, quality uh, assurance from Volkswagen Germany. So currently, uh, what they did, they did a first test uh, and they got a positive ROI, return on investment of this kind of system, uh, because they need to uh, put this machine into the production line to measure the main body four. So they have called this main body four where they are measuring the complete BIW. And they basically got this uh, like a technical approval. So they are implementing same system in their different factories around the world. Currently, they did it in China and uh, Germany, and now they are planning for Spain. So here, yeah, as I said, we are measuring directly into the production line uh, with four robot and four sensor. So here uh, this is a short video they shoot it uh, with a mobile um, because of obviously uh, they can't uh, show their entire production line uh, but here you can see that uh, like this is a production line body comes it sits onto the rps element that column then the scanning starts and then robot comes they scan different areas different position depending on the measurement plan you have given or the area which you are interested into the production line and within uh, like uh, one minute they are finishing it the entire body and they are calling the next body so once it is done the scanning body will go up into the production line and then next body will come again it will sit into the rps points and then the scanning will start again. So you can see uh, they are scanning uh, the BIW within two minutes, I would say. Okay, so uh, I hope uh, you got uh, something from my presentation, some interesting material, and you can just, uh, okay, you can just uh, like, uh, check uh, what you can basically implement in your factory according to your pain points and like obviously we will be available uh, for you AI team AI team is available uh, in Vietnam and they can guide you like if you are trying to achieve something like this in the production environment but as you know this will be the future because uh, nowadays the like a design to market for any product, the time is getting shorter and shorter and we need to uh, like uh, inspect the part quickly so that we can uh, satisfy the market need with our product. So obviously this will be the future to measure the part directly into the production environment. 
so with that uh, i would say like uh, that was all from my side uh, and thank you so much for listening to me